So today the plan is to set the timing. I did some distributor work and that's what necessitated the timing. I had an oil leak right in here, it was pretty bad. But in any case, I replaced the O-ring, took care of the oil leak, uh, changed uh, uh, valve cover gaskets and a few other things. But in any case, as a result of moving the distributor, I now need to reset the timing. And so what I want to do, it's a pretty easy process, but I have these clocks and I'm going to put them in a couple of locations just in the event anyone has any question about how long it takes to do something like this. And I'll try to keep these clocks in focus. It's not always easy to do. I have a GoPro that I'm going to be using or trying to use to do this. And those GoPros, for some reason, are just, I think, just horrible little pieces of camera. Uh, so anyway, the, so the process is this. The vehicle has these jumpers on it, and you have to get these jumpers set so that they so that the computer doesn't interfere with you trying to set the timing. So there's, uh, and all this of course is from the factory service manual. There are a couple of jumpers that you'll need to set. It is E1 and TE1, and the way you determine where the specific jumpers are is a little diagram in here, and this is what it looks like. And you'll notice it says uh, TE1 and E1. So TE1 is the second row, second jumper in the middle. E1 is the third row, top jumper. And so what we'll do is get those set, start the vehicle, let it warm up to operating temperature. Once it's warmed to operating temperature, connect the timing light, set the timing. The timing is to be set to three degrees before top dead center. I do know that People will, you know, change the timing and set it, you know, to, to what suits them. But in any case, uh, for my purposes, uh, setting the timing to the factory service manual will work just fine for me. So that's going to be the plan. We'll see how long this takes. I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, the jumpers are set. Let's go ahead and give it a start. This, this thing stops every few minutes. I've done a video and I, it's, I don't know why it's heating up. It doesn't have a battery in it. All right, it's supposed to be recording, so we'll see if we get it. Okay, I'm gonna let the vehicle warm up for a little bit, get to operating temperature. And after it gets to operating temperature, I'm going to come up and loosen the distributor hold down bolt, connect the timing light, check the timing. It should be three degrees before top dead center. We'll see how it goes. So that's about where it should be. We can see that the vehicle is warmed up. Let's go ahead and get the timing checked. All right. Time and light is connected. Connect All right, the number one plug wire. The readings right. on the right, RPM. The reading on the left is the actual timing. So when I start the vehicle, this should be at zero, and then three degrees before top dead center on the on the truck. Go ahead and get started. Okay, just started the vehicle, it's warm. Time and light is connected. We can see that the RPM is about 673, that's about where it should be. We can also see that the uh, timing is starting at zero on the timing light, which is where we want it set. Now we'll go ahead and check the timing. Actually, that's about perfect. Not quite, it's almost there. Can you see that? Actually, it looks like it's about four degrees. I mean, it's very, very close. The interesting thing is that on the OBD2 scanner, it showed, showed about four and a half, five degrees before top dead center, which is consistent with what the timing light is showing. It's just off a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen 
the uh, hold down bolt on the distributor. Turn the distributor slightly and see if we can't get this lined up right in. Had to go cool my camera off so that we get the last bit here. But anyway, timing is done. Lockdown bolt is torqued down. We'll go ahead and remove the timing light. Also remove the jumpers. Okay, well that's it, the timing has been set. I had a difficult time keeping the clocks in focus, but it took about 37, 35 minutes, about, let's call it 35 minutes uh, to do this. It, there's no rush, and the plan wasn't to rush to do this. I mean, you can always do something quicker, but the, the, the objective of the clocks was simply to, for anyone who's interested in doing this and might not know how to do it, I know it's a simple process, but if you don't know, you don't know. Uh, but in any case, it's just to show approximately how long it takes to do the job, what it takes to do the job, and if there were any problems encountered, of course, I would have had to resolve those on camera with the clock running. So if there's a DIY person out there going to do their own, going to set their own time, it'll give you an idea of approximately how long it took to do the job. So anyway, in this case, it was about 37 minutes. I hope you will like, follow me, and subscribe as I fix, repair, and upgrade my backyard find. I'll see you in the next video.